G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I have had a fight with my printer today and it has completely derailed my plans for what I was going to do. So I figured actually this would be a great time to check in with you and tell you uh, my current like journal planner setup lineup uh, that I've got going on and my thoughts moving forward because we're fastly approaching the end of the year and this is typically when I would get very geared up for Christmas. I've got my box here. I just pulled this out of the closet. This is my cute little box I got from Target last year. And this is all the stuff that I just have in there from last year, just Christmassy things, washi tapes, off cuts of, uh, what are they called, wrapping papers, a ton of clip koalas, apparently. <laughs> I should get those out and give those to people. I already have enough of those in my tree, but uh, I got that out because that's all my Christmas stuff. I've got some more stuff to put in there. This is when I'd be gearing up for all of that, and I did mention earlier this year that I was going to do a Christmas deco journal. If you don't know what that is, I've been using the Amazon Direct Publishing to make these pre-decorated journals. These ones are actually well, finished, is probably not the right word for the other one, but this one's finished. Um, but they're pre-decorated, so this was a black and white one. This is actually currently available on Amazon. It's the only one that I've done that is uh, available to purchase uh, for people. The other one I did was my family one and I made a bunch of those and I just personally bought them so that I could use them for my trip to Australia. This one, so you can see here, JLB Creative Deco Journal, the black and white. So this is purchasable and this is the family one that I'm still working on for my trip to Australia. I'm just going to put my little notes everywhere and my little stickers, but it's for the most part, it's actually full, uh, but it's just not finished. It's a good way to put it. Full, but not finished. <laughs> so that's my family one. Love those. I was planning on making a Christmas one and wouldn't you believe it? I've actually gotten quite a ways through it, but it's not finished and I have zero time to be finishing it right now. So it's on the fence and I'm not really going to be too upset if I don't get it done because I actually halfway through got completely sidetracked and started using an AI, uh, like a generative AI, I don't know what it's called, program. Uh, that I paid ten dollars for. It was only for a week. Ten dollars for a week is a bit expensive, I think. But I used it for a whole day and made all of these kind of assets to use. They're visual kind of assets from my older work. Anyway, I'm gonna put some of those in Collage Club for December because I think they're interesting. I'm so on the fence about how, how AI is moving and and what we're gonna be using it for and what it's gonna replace and do. But this is not a conversation for this video. I just thought I'd tell you. Uh, that I was doing that. The plan that I purchased, maybe it was expensive because it was, um, I guess, licensable, like you were allowed to use it for commercial purposes. So uh, perhaps that's why, but all of that to say, you'll see that in Collage Club and possibly the Deco Journal if it comes, but I wouldn't hold my breath for it. I'm certainly not. So what my plan is actually to do uh, really Christmas journaling, the uh, good old December daily, as a lot of people do. I'm not doing it daily, but I'll put all my Christmas junk in here. I'm going to do what I did last year, the big Trader Joe's uh, jumbo journal, the, the paper bag journal that I make. This one is currently in progress. This is the third one that I have. I started the first one last year with Christmas, and then I did another one throughout this year, and then that one got full, and now I've got this one, which is, uh, it's not full, but there's a lot of stuff in here, and... I uh, am excited to keep going with it. What on earth has happened here? Uh, this, oh, there you go. <laughs> it just, just takes one little wayward bit of ephemera to make the whole thing fall apart. Anyway, so this is my current one. And I think there's actually enough space. Yeah, look at the back of the journal. There's like hardly anything in here. I can add my little extra bits and pieces and uh, and put Christmas in here, I think. I don't, I don't see myself needing more than this for Christmas. These are huge journals and I've got all my junk in here. This journal, if you don't know or haven't come across them before, is a mixture of junk. Like this is the backing of a lot of my uh, sticker sheets, my collage club ephemera sheets that I print on sticker paper the weeded backgrounds, and then just sentimental things as well. Like there's my Not Scary Farm pin in here. They're so big and they're so, uh, like there's a lot of space to put a lot of stuff, a lot of big ephemera, like the uh, cold brew coffee label that I <laughs> usually drink. I don't drink that one anymore, but it's a good memory now. Uh, big photos, love to put those in here. Packaging, I like, I like to keep that stuff. Um, I'm a hoarder, obviously, but it's not hoarding because it's in a journal. And then some, you know, fully bulky stuff as well. There's not a ton of pages in them when I put them together, so I can really bulk it out. That's why I've got a literal, uh, like, Starbucks 
paper bag in here. I actually saved another one because I liked the print on it now that it's Christmas. I want to put that one in there. Last year I did use the Christmas version of the Trader Joe's paper bags, but I don't know if I have any of those. So I'll just be working in this and I don't think it'll matter too much. So that's where Christmas is going to go and it'll be very, uh, you know, very much like it was last year. Nothing too overly themed or specific, but I'll get Christmassy when I get Christmassy and that should be great. I'm also still, so this is kind of like a current, a currently using uh, video. I'm still using my weeks. My weeks is almost full. Absolutely loved my Hobonichi weeks. I've got another one ready to go for next year. This is my 101 Dalmatians one in a Galen leather cover. Look how soft and supple this crazy horse leather uh, weeks. I don't, is it called a weeks cover? I'm not quite sure. It's just one of the, like there's no elastic or anything. It's just a, a wallet style. There's a zipper pocket in the back that I never use. Literally have never touched that. Um, I use some of these to hold things. I, I typically use this pocket back here, but it's just been fantastic. And now that it's really soft and pliable, I just really love it. Now, I don't think this is the right thing to do with it, but I have hand cream that I use when I do my videos. <laughs> I, uh, I use this hand cream to condition the leather. I figured that it was the same thing because it's moisturizing. It's probably not the best thing for it, but it did give it that kind of slightly glossy sheen to it and it made the leather a lot more pliable so don't don't do that because i'm saying to do it i'm just letting you know that i did do it and that's where we're at that's your information <laughs> uh, but i'm currently using that absolutely love that and here's where i feel a little derailed uh a la plans for the end of the year my five-year journal sorry there's so many little glue sticks that i got out of a box the other day that are rolling everywhere this is my five-year Hobonichi Techo, and this is the last year that I'll be using it. I've made a bunch of videos on this this year, and I'm assuming you're probably going to see a few more by the year's end, because I still have so much to finish, but it's become an absolute beast to use. Super duper chunky. This was what derailed me today, actually. It's derailing me in every sense of the term, because I had my fight with my printer trying to print out uh, photo spreads for this, so that's where... My whole day went trying to figure that out. And then uh, I've just got to finish all the right-hand side pages. Actually, a lot of them are done. I think I'm up to March, April. I might be up to April. Um, and then but a lot of the pages, like this is a random one in May, right? This is all finished, so I don't need to go back and fix that. I could put like a little sticker in here. But some pages on the right-hand side are completely empty, and I would love to address every single spread and make sure it's finished by the end of the year. So we can do a lovely fully finished flip for 2024. I feel like everything in that was just alliterated and rhyming and that just felt great to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is that. And I'm really excited to get into the new one just because it's so small and I've been having an absolute nightmare of a time trying to write over the hump. Like, where are we? We're back in November here. Trying to write down to here. And I don't think it's a right-handed or left-handed issue. I think both uh, handedness people will struggle. First of all, if you're using the table to write on, I love that I'm giving you a demo. This literally relates to no one unless you're using this journal on its fifth year. But just something to note, if you're, if you're on year two, you've got this to look forward to. You know, before when you're writing up here, you can lean your wrist on the book, right? Uh, now I have to lean my wrist over here, like maybe here to write, but that's already on the hump. So it's kind of awkward. What I would usually do is take my planner, butt it up against here so that I can elevate my wrist a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to write. And then I kind of wedge my finger into the bottom of the page. Now I have to hold this down because it's so curved at this point and it makes it almost impossible to get my pen board back in there, my pencil board, because this is so stiff and rigid. Once I pull this back, it's going to pull it out of the binding. So I've all but given up on this at this point, um, unless I'm on the right hand side page, it still works for that. And then when I write, getting over to here, I mean, you'll see most of my entries from this point on just become illegible uh, just over here, because you almost have to go fully sideways to get the writing on there. Just something to note, but it has been causing me a little bit of pain. Not physical, just emotional. <laughs> I figured I'd just let you know because what am I here for if not to tell you all about my journaling woes? But I have loved it. It's still one of my favorite things. I'm pretty sure this will become my favorite journal absolutely ever when it's fully finished. And it's hard to say that because I have so many that I love, but this is so packed full of memories. I know I rave on about it, but I mean, I also just, 
I love looking back at like the five years of effort it takes to do one of these spreads and just like the commitment that I made to making this pink over five years. I mean, who knew back in 2019 that I'd follow through? <laughs> this is a great uh, measure of people's aptitude and their willingness to dedicate themselves to something, I think. I love looking at the uh, fully completed 5 year Hobonichis. It just it really feels like a feat. Like it feels like an accomplishment. This is not an easy journal to get through. Um, and especially, you know, especially like when I think about how much I've grown in five years art journaling wise and how much my passion for it has developed, but also how much, like how varied my thoughts on it have become. Like I'll have photo journals and I'll have garbage journals and I'll have, you know, those huge jumbo journals. Like there, there's so many going on at this point and trying to apply all of those very free kind of free range unlimited types of creativity to this book in particular is actually quite difficult. This just goes right back to words and pictures. And, you know, even though I print a bunch of them out now, which was something I wasn't doing in the beginning, uh, that's kind of something that grew with me over time. A lot of them are still just drawings, drawings and paintings that I've done. And it's just, it's just kind of interesting to see how how that's all changed. And I don't feel restricted by it in any way. I guess that's not the point that I'm trying to make. Um, but I do feel like this serves a very specific purpose. Whereas most of my other journaling at this point, uh, I'll pick up a journal and do absolutely anything in it. Like a photo could end up in there. Some trash could end up in there. <laughs> like, like some writing could end up in there. I mean, who knows? It's it really, you know, pick up a book and just start working in it. This one is, it's just still got a few rules. I guess I am still a little limited with what I can do in this, but it's not in a bad way. It's just, you know, I wouldn't be sticking in any ephemera that's more than a sticker or a piece of washi tape. Back in the day, I used to not do any of that. Oh, look, completely blank page. I must really hate the 23rd of July <laughs> and the 24th. <laughs> but then we're getting closer to my birthday. I know I don't hate that. Oh, here I put in an extra, like a whole extra page. That's a wild thing to do in a book like this. But it's more my birthday. You've got so much to journal there. This tips up because I've got extra stuff to do. There's just significant dates in here. And some of those spreads are really lovely to look back at. Like this is my anniversary date, uh, the 26th of September. So it's nice to look back on those. Look, I was celebrating my third. Now I'm up to my seventh. It's just so fun. I can't help myself. I always get really sidetracked looking through this. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Um, but it is a very specific journal for a very specific purpose. And everything else is kind of free range chickens. Arthur. This is the only other one that I've been picking up. It's I'm, I'm actually quite limited right now. I'm not really carrying around a ton. Um, oh no, I lie. I've been taking this to work with me just because it's small. I hand bound a bunch of these when I used to do a lot of Instagram live streams, but um, I've been taking this to work with me. I've been working on some collage club stuff. So you might see that in December. And then this one, this is a in art. I remember I told you guys I got this at Riot Arts and Crafts years ago. They were having a clearance on these and I don't know why, because they're absolutely gorgeous journals. These are some of the first ones I used. They're kind of like cardstock. Can you hear that? That really thick cardstock paper. It's not a watercolor paper. This one specifically says drawing and it doesn't take watercolor like you think it would. So I, I really do think it's just some kind of cardstock. I use watercolor in it because I just love it. But um, yeah, I've done a bunch of stuff in here, a lot of workshop stuff and uh, old Patreon stuff. So this very much feels like an anything type art journal. Like I usually get in here and draw and paint and play and just have a lovely time. And I might do my Merry Mix Media in this, I think. I've got all the lessons planned out, but I didn't know whether I wanted to make a new journal for it or to do what I was doing with my virtual voyages and work on loose paper and then put it in a journal. So it's either that, I'm either gonna put it on loose paper and maybe pop it inside this journal or I'll just work straight inside this journal. Uh, Cause this has got a lot of workshop stuff in here. Virtual voyage stuff, this was my Daisy style workshop stuff, love that. Um, if you're thinking about any of the workshops, I'll just say, hold off until Merry Mix Media because I always put a coupon code in there for everyone who joins. Uh, so just save yourself the trouble and wait until that comes out <laughs> if you're looking to uh, get access to that coupon code. But yeah, I have a great time drawing in this. It's such a smooth, beautiful cardstock that drawing just feels like a pleasure in it. So I don't stress myself out with doing anything too crazy. Like this was just a 
image I started on live stream and then completely abandoned to go to this. So if I did have some ephemera, I might just stick it over the top of this. And there's some random blank pages on the left hand side. For some reason, I love to draw on the right, even though you'd think I'd draw on the left because I'm right handed so I could rest on it. I've always just preferred drawing on the right, right hand side. Something in my brain. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, this is just a regular art journal. <laughs> there's Amanta. Love this. Really enjoying uh, the hardbound nature of it too. Something about a hardbound cover just feels so much more luxe. I don't mind uh, kind of cracking the spine and everything falling apart. A lot of my old art journals kind of fall apart that way. Um, to me, it just kind of adds to how much they were used and loved. But it can be annoying, I guess, for some people. I don't know. I Maybe I like go in and out of being annoyed by it, but I'm not in an annoyed state right now. So... <laughs> I'll just go with it. This is a lot of prep for Virtual Voyage 7? 8. Which one do we just do? It's got to be on here somewhere. I must have written it. Burton Will. 8. I'm pretty sure it was 8. It's going to annoy me. Oh, I literally have the book here. Burton Will 2. Virtual Voyage 8. Great. Sorry, had to figure that out. <laughs> so this is it. I mean, I think I've got everything out because I've been using it, but it's not a super, super huge spread like it usually is. I've got my planner because I need that, especially with all the dancing, like the dates get very confusing for me. I usually, I mean, for the past however many years, right, I've had nothing on my schedule except JLB creative work, which is all my own schedule. <laughs> so I've maybe been using a planner, but nothing I've had to be on a specific time for usually. Um, not this one. This one. This one's still on the desk because I need to finish up some of the stuff in here. So we've got a deco journal. We've got my art journal. Sorry, just knocked the camera. Five-year jumbo journal and this little traveler. Little watercolor insert that I've been taking to work with me just because it's super portable. But that's it. it it's so little right now. And I, I mostly attribute that to the fact that I'm focusing on this. And this is actually taking up a lot of my time. And there's not a lot that I feel like... I mean, I have shown you videos of finishing it up. But, I mean, you've seen the videos if you've seen them, <laughs> right? The um, It's usually, like, filling up empty spots. There's not a ton that I do that's, you know, start to finish kind of art journaling style. So sometimes they don't feel like very interesting videos. That's not to say that I won't keep doing them, because I absolutely will. But I think I want to go back to that format of doing the last five years. You know how I did that in Playtest Patreon? I would read out every single entry uh, for the past five years, but you would watch the video uh, of me putting it all together. In Patreon, I didn't do that. It was just like a sit and chat type video. But I think I've done one on YouTube where I used footage of me finishing up the days uh, with the, the chat about the entries over the five years. So that's going to be my plan for this, hopefully throughout the end of the year. And we can uh, finish that off together. I know a lot of you have this, so I'm hopefully uh, going to see a lot more of your posts and hopefully you are encouraged and excited to do it. Don't listen to me when I say that it's super overwhelming and let that be a bad thing. I'm just kind of stating how I've felt <laughs> over time. <laughs> Some days you feel really on it and then other days you just feel like, oh wow, this is a lot. Um, but it is. I mean, so I, I don't want to lie about it. It's definitely a big commitment and, you know, I don't think they're the most expensive journals in the world. Like, I think if people don't finish them, I don't think most people tend to care that they've spent money on it and didn't finish it. I think from what I've heard, people that uh, either fall really far behind or tend to abandon them just feel upset because it was something they wish they could have committed to. And that's, I think, you know, the sentimental feeling I have about this specific journal at the end, I can totally relate to that. I would be upset that I, if I didn't finish it because... Um, because I love what it is. It's not like, oh, I, I made a mistake buying it. I didn't have the money or I didn't have the time or anything. I think people just really like seeing what it becomes in the end. And everyone kind of wishes they had one for themselves. So that's kind of what sold me in the beginning was the idea of looking back on five years and having one almost finished and actually doing that uh, has been as rewarding as I imagined it was in the beginning. Uh, but it did come with that huge commitment to to doing it. And I've done a whole video on like, you know, my thoughts about it and what I think people should consider as they do it. I know it sounds really dramatic, but uh, there's a whole bunch of reasoning as to why I felt like I should make that video uh, when I made it. So go check that out if you're curious and you're thinking about buying one of these or if you're, I mean, they're a great gift for someone as well. If you know someone in your life that would love this, um, I always think 
that this would be such a perfect gift. And they do a really beautiful gift set on Hobonichi as well. It's a little girly for me, which is saying a lot because I love lots of girly things, but it's just very soft maybe. I like like super girly things, like glittery, <laughs> glittery mermaid and fairy things. But this one was just, it was very pastel-y, very soft. I guess it kind of reminded me too much of Easter and that it was too seasonal. But I love this red. This red is great. It's super dirty now. I don't know how it got so dirty in the last year alone because I've been keeping it pretty good for a long time. But hopefully I can clean it up nicely. And this will sit on my shelf once it's done. Look at that poor spine. Just wonderful. Alrighty. So there is uh, my current setup. Hopefully you enjoyed looking through that. Very, I mean, it's very, it's very minimal. It's very brief at this time of year. Who would have known? Who would have thunk? I think one of these things didn't have like 20 journals on the desk. <laughs> Times change. Um, I'm looking forward to being really committed to this and to uh, putting all my Christmas back in the jumbo journal. It does make it a lot easier. It's a, little, it's a lot easier just to chuck it in there and not feel too much pressure about it. I do love my old... Traveler's Notebook one, the Job's Journal decorated insert. I loved that one. I kind of wish I would do that one again, but like that, that also was like kind of a commitment to it. Um, so anyway, those are just my thoughts. Sorry, I could ramble on for years. I feel like I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I will see you again soon. Have a lovely weekend. And until then, bye.